Okay, so now we're getting into the more relevant uh, type of animals, at least in relation to human um, research. So a lot of time is spent on studying vertebrates because while they are generally larger, they are generally um, have a large presence felt in their environments. And studies that we do on vertebrates often translate well into uh, human application, whether it be health or ecosystem or environmental. So um, <clears throat> we're going to go through the different um, groups within the vertebrates, including this nice phylogeny. Can never get enough phylogenies, right? So first off, vertebrates belong to the phylum chordata, which have four derived characters. First is a notochord, which is a um, stiffened rod around which um, your vertebrae develop a dorsal hollow nerve cord, which is what your um, central nervous system develops from pharyngeal gill slits, which become various different bones and different uh, structures and different uh, animals, and a post anal tail, which is retained in some organisms but not in others. So, first off, the notochord is a longitudinal flexible rod. Um, located between digestive tube and the nerve cord for muscle attachment um, in lance. It's present in all embryonic chordates and in some adults. Mostly it's replaced though. This forms the intervertebral discs in humans, which is made of cartilage, allows for you to bend uh, your back from side to side and lean forward <clears throat> without bending at the hip. So our two invertebrate species include the lancelets, which is the most basal group of chordates, also called cephalochordata. Um, they retain the notochord as an adult, so they do not have bone structures as adults. They're filter feeding, so they just kind of stick out of the um, substrate, as you can see here, and um, filter the water for organisms which they digest. Um, they also have a small cluster of nerve cells with the Hox genes, if you remember, which were important for the development of um, and radiation of, of, of animals. These are also found in vertebrate brains. So um, basal, the, this is a basal group for vertebrates or, or for chordates and um, has those characteristics which are developed and more complex in other vertebrates. Tunicates are our other invertebrate um, group. And this is, uh, I didn't put it on here, but Eurochordata. Um, they are often called sea squirts because they have basically this in-current and ex-current siphon, and that's how they filter feed. Their larval form has a notochord, uh, and it looks similar to the lancelets. Um, <clears throat> but it becomes sessile, attaches to a, a, a substrate, and just remains there and loses a lot of the characteristics. Um, adults have this incurrent and excurrent siphon, which uses filter feed, and the genomes have been uh, sequenced. So, this is a, a valuable research organism f um, in genetics to establish early chordate re relationships. All right, the dorsal hollow nerve cord is the tube that develops from the endoderm, and it lies dorsal to the nodal cord or um, closer to the surface. It becomes the brain and the spinal cord. Pharyngeal gill slits, these are a series of pouches, sometimes called pharyngeal gill pouches or pharyngeal pouches. Um, they're separated by grooves that form along the pharynx, the throat area. This becomes spaces for filter feeders, gill slits in fish, bones in um, other vertebrates, or cartilage, so our thyroid cartilage, um, which surrounds the Adam's apple, is also formed pharyngeal gill slits. The post anal tail, you can see it embryonically um, developing, um, and is retained in many species such as monkeys, salamanders, and sharks. All right, so <clears throat> all of these um, 
uh, adaptations that you see on the phylogeny are important for um, a variety of feeding and movement adaptations. Um, some of the prominent ones include bone, uh, vertebrae, jaws, fins, and limbs. And then we have some more um, developed or more derived ones with the amniotic egg and the milk, which don't have to do with feeding and locomotion, which have to do with reproduction. So our craniates are our basal group called hagfishes, and they actually don't have any jaws or vertebrae, but they do have a head, okay? Um, and they are uh, marine scavenger, scavengers that secrete slime uh, for defense. Um, so you'll, you'll find these on the ocean floor, wandering around looking for um, dead things and uh, when like say a whale will f will die and fall to the ocean floor you'll see a bunch of these immediately showing up to uh, consume the rotting whale all right bone so there's a group called cynodonts which are currently extinct um, they did not have jaws but they did have teeth rows of teeth teeth um, and so they had mineralized structures, not um, a skeleton uh, made of bone. And they were abundant for 300 million years. Um, other armored vertebrates also had bony plates and spines. So the beginnings of these, these bony, bony structures found in different parts of their body. Um, the lamprey is our current group, which does not have jaws. Um, but it has teeth around an oral sucker. So these kind of look like a nightmare. Um, but what they do is they latch onto other organisms and then um, eat their skin or suck on uh, their blood. So they are parasites as well. All right, vertebrae um, then was the expans expansion of these um, mineralized teeth. Uh, into replacing cartilaginous uh, skeleton parts. Um, they replaced the function of the nodal cord and allowed for muscle attachment and resistance for thrust, so things with the skeleton can um, produce more force for movement. They are also the body axis for appendages, such as um, fins or um, arms and legs. And the lampreys then are the, the basal group of vertebrates. All right, jaws were formed from the anterior pharyngeal gill slits. Okay, so you can see that here. Um, these became jaws developmentally. And um, they followed, allowed for specialized feeding, so you can um, have teeth coming off of them. And so allowed for um, predation in most fish. Um, use their uh, their jaws not only for you know catching other organisms but also for um, herbivorous herbivorous um, eating as well or feeding as well so the nathostomes then are the group which are the jawed fish which fishes which replace the cynodonts in the fossil record um, and also the jawless fishes uh, fins then was our next development, which uh, allowed for specialized movement in water, allows for thrust and stability. So a, uh, especially if you have specialized feeding parts in the anterior part of your body, um, maintaining them in a specific location requires stability and uh, thrust allows you to move faster in the water column. So the fastest swimming fish is this sailfish here. It has very specialized fins. This central fin, dorsal fin for um, stability. It has a very um, streamlined body shape and um, uh, this very pointy nose to reduce drag as well. Um, so this is the sailfish. It can swim up to 60 miles per hour in water, which is amazing because that takes a lot of energy and force. Um, chondrichthys then is our um, uh, sharks and rays and skates, they have mineralized teeth um, 
but most of their skeleton is just cartilage. Um, and this seems to be a derived trait. So they, um, their ancestors had bones. It was just replaced by cartilage. Osteichthys are bony fish, uh, include ray finned and lobe finned fishes. The ray finned fishes have bony fins that form these rays, and the lobe finned fishes um, have rod shaped bones surrounded by a thick layer of muscle, and they have these pectoral and pelvic fins which they can use to kind of walk along the seafloor. It includes lungfish and the coelacanth. This is a coelacanth here, um, which as a, its ancestor gave rise to, or a similar like lobe finned fish gave rise to tetrapods. All right, the next few then adaptations for living on land are limbs, lungs, and amniotic egg. So the limbs are very important for land to have um, something to resist gravity because there's no buoyancy from the uh, water. Um, originally limbs were out of the body, so f further away um, rather than underneath the body. Um, this fossil called Tiktaalik has both fish and tetrapod characteristics, so it had uh, limbs <clears throat> that allowed it to you know, uh, stand up on land. It had um, a neck with ribs and a flat skull, eyes on top of its head rather than on the side. Um, the fish characters include it had scales, fins, it had gills um, with lungs. And so this is a good example of an intermediate species or a missing link. All right, lungs developed from an organ in fish called the swim bladder, which was uh, mostly used for buoyancy, but there are some fish that can gulp water and then store air and use that air in their uh, swim bladder which is a rudimentary lung, essentially. Um, lungfish can live extended periods of time using only lung for gas exchange. They can even um, burrow into holes in the ground when, it's, when it gets dry and then just um, remain in a state of dormancy until waters come again. Uh, this allows for more efficient extraction of oxygen from air rather than gills which kind of collapse on top of each other. Tetrapods have limbs with digits. Um, the first and second vertebrae are modified to allow for head movement and include amphibians, amniotes, um, amphibians and amniotes which include reptiles and mammals. Um, so the atlas and the axis are these first two vertebrae. One, the atlas, which is the first one coming up, allows you to nod your head up and down where the axis allows you to rotate your head side to side. The amniotic egg was a, a development to help with land. So in, on, in water, you could lay your leg, eggs in the water and everything, um, the transpiration of gases and nutrients could all be contained within uh, that water egg. but uh, if you're evolving from water to land, you have to deal with desiccation. So an, a shell was important, um, and then but still allowing for the transport of gases and things. So we have four specialized membranes in the amniotic egg, including the amnion, which is the fluid-filled um, cavity, which cushions the embryo so you can shake it around a little and it's not going to just um, have tissue damage. The chorion, which is for gas exchange, this is kind of the purple layer on the outside here. The yolk sac, which contains yolk, which is the nutrients, so this uh, embryo can develop. The allantois, which is also helps in uh, gas exchange and helps to um, release waste. Albumin is um, also found in many eggs. It's a fluid that surrounds the embryo and also has lots of nutrients. So the amniotic egg allowed for um, eggs to be laid on land. Um, mammals have other derived traits, including, this is the definitive part of mammals, a dental squamosal joint for their um, jaw articulation. 
I don't have a picture of it here, but um, it also has three inner ear bones. Most of the groups have one hair or fur, mammary glands that produce milk, a diaphragm, which allows uh, a negative pressure to pull air into your lungs. They are endothermic and have four chambered hearts. These are not, and specialized teeth. These are not um, unique. Other animal groups also have these, but. All right, so some examples of mammals include humans, bats, lemurs, and whales. They've um, inhabited a variety of habitats. Um, they can fly, they are aquatic. Um, many are found in the tropics. And that's our vertebrates. So we'll go over the um, we'll go over the adaptations and on the phylogeny, and then also um, the different groups um, which belong to the different which have the different characters and belong to the different uh, clades. And that's it for vertebrates.